Hey, happy Friday. This week we'll talk about how Huawei overtook Samsung to become the largest phone maker in the world for the first time ever. We'll talk about how the world's largest chip maker doesn't seem to care about Huawei. And we'll also talk about the actual criminal drama that is going on at ARM right now. Welcome to the Friday Checkout. Okay, my pick of the week is gonna be Huawei overtaking Samsung for the first time ever in terms of smartphone shipments and becoming the largest smartphone maker in the world. And that's big news just on its own, but it is especially impressive that it's happening right now as the US government is putting so much pressure on this company. So according to Canalyst, which is the market research firm that actually broke this news, Huawei shipped 55.8 million devices last quarter, while Samsung shipped 53.7 million. Now that difference is kind of in the margin of error territory, but it is impressive nonetheless. In a strange way, the US government actually made this victory possible because they kind of forced Huawei to retreat from a lot of their international markets about a year ago and to focus instead on their home market of China. And that was the perfect market to focus on during the pandemic. Since the ban, Huawei has gone all in on the Chinese market. They now sell 72% of their phones at home versus just 51% when the ban started. They actually own 46% of the entire Chinese smartphone market, which is insanely big. And of course, the Chinese economy has actually started recovering much faster than a lot of international markets like the US and India, for example, which is where Samsung is really big. So this focus has weirdly been a really good choice. So that is both really impressive from Huawei and kind of just lucky, but I do expect a couple of tough quarters ahead. International sales are down 27% year over year. They have been declining ever since the Huawei ban. And with last week's news of TSMC dropping them as a customer, I actually expect them to have quite a lot of trouble making new phones and new chips as well. My next video on my main channel will actually be a full analysis on how about a year after it was announced, the Huawei ban has actually impacted Huawei, its suppliers, its competitors, basically the whole industry. So if you wanna see that, I've linked to Tech Altar down below and should be dropping very soon now. Okay, my win of the week is gonna be a related story. Remember how last week I talked about how TSMC, the world's largest chip manufacturer from Taiwan, actually had to drop Huawei as a customer due to US pressure? Well, this week they had the most amazing turnaround. Somewhere between 14 and 20% of all of TSMC sales went to Huawei before the ban, so one could have assumed that losing Huawei as a customer would have been a major blow to TSMC, but apparently no. They just shrugged it off like nothing happened. And in fact, their stock this week actually skyrocketed. Their stock price is doing so well that for the first time ever, TSMC is now one of the top 10 most valuable publicly traded companies. They are now worth way more than any other chip maker like Intel, Nvidia, Nvidia, AMD, all of those. And not only has the Huawei loss not really slowed them down, they've actually increased their sales forecasts. How is that possible? Well, TSMC, who by the way makes chips for everyone from Apple, AMD, Qualcomm, and so on, they're apparently so much ahead of the competition when it comes to manufacturing technologies that they simply cannot be replaced. If a company chooses to not manufacture their chips by TSMC, they'll have such a technological disadvantage that their competitors who do use TSMC chips, they will eventually outcompete them. And in the end, TSMC will win anyway. Just this week, we finally heard Intel admitting that they have fallen so far behind TSMC in terms of manufacturing that their competitors like AMD, for example, who do use TSMC, well, they have gotten ahead so far that Intel had to give in. They will have to start outsourcing some of their manufacturing to TSMC as well. Otherwise, they'll never be able to catch up. And TSMC is hoping that the same will happen to Huawei as well. Investors of TSMC basically believe that Huawei will lose so much of its competitiveness if it cannot buy from TSMC that its competitors like Ericsson and Nokia in the networking equipment space and, I don't know, Xiaomi and Oppo in the smartphone space, well, those will outcompete them so hard that in the end, TSMC will win anyway. That is pretty brutal. It would mean that TSMC in the world of electronics is basically a kingmaker. It can decide which companies will win and which companies will lose. And if that is true, if the investors are right about that, then this company being somewhere in the top 10 kind of makes sense. 
Okay, for my fail of this week, let's switch to something a little more lighthearted and ridiculous. Let's talk about a crime story that is unfolding before our very own eyes. I'm talking about ARM, the company that makes the designs for almost all the mobile chips in the world, being in a ridiculous legal battle with its own subsidiary, ARM China. So in 2018, Arm Holdings sold 51% of its shares in its Chinese subsidiary to various Chinese investors. Some of it were private investors like Hopu and some of it were state-backed funds. And the purpose of this entity was to hold and manage the licenses of Arm in the country. Of course, hugely important for the Chinese government and for the Chinese industry to ensure that these licenses would continue being there for them whenever they need it. In June of this year, the parent company, Arm Holdings, then announced that they have received complaints from whistleblowers about the CEO of the local unit, Alan Wu, that have, and I'm going to quote here, serious irregularities, including failing to disclose conflicts of interest and violations of the employee handbook. So they actually decided to fire him and replace him with interim CEOs. And then in the most amazing turn of events, Alan then decided that, you know, screw those guys. He doesn't want to get removed. He, as far as I can tell, never actually disputed the original claims. Instead, he just basically said, you know what? You guys are a minority shareholder. We are a separate legal entity. You can't remove me. Arm has since made a joint statement with Hopu, one of the private investors. Apparently all the state-owned investors have basically remained silent on this issue until now. But basically now Alan has hired personal security guards and they're all just going to court over this. And however this ends up being resolved, it could have huge consequences for the whole Chinese technology industry. All right, as for Crowd, my product review app, this week we've added about 600 brand new products to our database, including two brand new categories in the form of graphic tablets. So check out the new products and review them if you own any of them. Beside that, we also have a new quiz, of course, with 20 brand new questions to test your tech knowledge on, including questions from topics that were covered in this video. As always, if you get at least 15 of them right, you can choose to get an invite called to Crowd to start reviewing the gadgets that you own, or you can just do it for fun. And that's it for this week's Friday Checkout. If you haven't realized yet, this is a new channel. This is my second channel. So if you're only subscribed to Tech Out, are subscribed to this one as well. As always, you can suggest topics for next week's Friday Checkout on my Twitter. It's at Tech Altar, and I'll see you next week.